Hey guys, just to let you know that Borderlands and The Last Ones are on Tubi right now. That's Tubi. It's a streaming service. You probably have it on your PlayStation or on your phone. Um, check it out. The Last Ones is a zombie drama. It's in black and white. The first black and white zombie movie, I think it is. I'm not going to check though or, you know. And also Borderland is a exploitation film about the cartels. And it's a lot of fun. And if you're like, hey... I want to learn about how El Paso is. Well, don't watch my film because it's not like how it is at all. But if you want to watch a fun movie set <laughs> in El Paso, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Borderland and The Last Ones on Tubi. Check them out now. And now, let's start with the show. Hey, guys. Welcome to The Bomb Squad. Or as you just heard our intro, The Bomb Squad. Um, what? Because that last ones and Borderland thing is going to run beforehand. Oh, I guess I don't say it's the bomb squad. Anyway, I'm Andrew Hanna, <laughs> writer, director. Welcome to our latest episode of The Bomb Squad, where we appreciate the underappreciated. And today, we have a very special... We're starting another series, but unlike Texas Chainsaw, we're going to take this one once a month. So it's not like if you don't like this movie or this series, you don't have to listen to it for a whole month straight or two months. Thanks, Leatherface. Today we're talking about the 2000. This is a movie from 2000. Y2K. A 2000 movie, Pitch Black, starring the amazing Vin Diesel. Now, eventually, we're going to talk about the Fast and Furious. You guys know that I love Vin Diesel. Have we done a Vin Diesel movie, Josh? Babylon yes, actually, do. Yeah. It's funny, as I was watching Pitch Black 2, I was like, oh, I think all my good feelings were just me thinking about Pitch Black. <laughs> like, watching Babylon ID and just, like, that carried over, you know? No, Babylon ID rocks. So back to Pitch That's Black. Really Pitch Black is a 2000 movie. It stars the very great Vin Diesel in one of his best roles as... Uh, Richard B. Riddick. It also stars Radna Mitchell as Caroline Fry. Her name's Caroline, and they call her Caroline a lot, a lot, and they call her Fry a lot, and I think that both of those names are ridiculous, but I appreciate that they went all in on them. It also stars Carl Hauser as Johns, and it stars Keith David, Black History yes. Month's own greatest actor, Keith David. <laughs> Uh, he's real, I mean, he's a great actor, so I'm sticking to that. It was directed by David Towery, and it was written by David Towery, and also David Towery's kind of stuck with this franchise. So this movie, it's not really, I mean, we can talk about it. It's it's more so that we can get into the sequels. We I like, I just don't want to not cover this one. It's also kind of underappreciated. Uh, but Josh, before I go into this, tell us what this movie is about. Um, a passenger ship crash lands on a derelict planet with a dark secret. So yeah, so yeah, this movie, I mean, it's universally loved, but it, like people don't talk about it as much as like Aliens versus Predator. And I think it's just as good. I think it gives both of those movies runs for their money. Um, and I also wanted to talk about it because it is like really a great example of how far you can take independent film because it was like pretty independent. It was a small production. And so I really want to talk about it. And you know I love Vin Diesel. He's so far been winning this. Like, okay, what's Vin Diesel done in the last month? He's he's tried to squash his beef with The Rock. He's um, made a TV or he's signed a deal to do a TV show of Fast and Furious for some reason. And that's all he's done. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> and he's posted pictures of him wearing like... Ed Hardy. Ed, Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy. He's still yeah. wearing. He still posts pictures of him wearing Ed Hardy clothes, despite <laughs> he, the fact that Ed Hardy doesn't exist anymore. He is permanently stuck in the early two thousands, and yeah. I appreciate if, it because I wish I was there too. If you don't know about Vin Diesel's Instagram, go check it out because it's the funniest. <laughs> like, it's not even. It's just funny because Vin Diesel is so sincere. It's it's an interesting like. It's like D Vin Diesel like Riddick essentially narrates the film. Your brain shuts down in cryosleep. All but the primitive side. The animal side. No wonder I'm still awake. 
Um, and there is this kind of like theme that I that I appreciated where, you know, it's like I wasn't really picking up on it the first time where um, people are like, essentially, they ask like, oh, is he dangerous only around humans? And it's like, oh, he's like, so it's like such a sociopathic monster. But then as the movie goes on, you kind of find out that all the adults except Keith David are like kind of selfish in the same way but they only blame like Riddick for it. And it's like, he's the only one like aware of like what everyone is watching it. Now it is like a pretty good metaphor. Like, of course it wasn't that at the time, but that's what makes this movie so good is it has great themes. And one of the themes of it is like everyone in this movie, except for Riddick is like, they all think that they're an expert on things that they're not an expert on. (laughs) Yeah. And so, like, multiple times characters find themselves, like, getting, screwing themselves over just because they, what they think is happening isn't actually what's happening, but they don't want to take the time to, like, get out of their own worldview and, like, look at it. And instead, they want to, like, just decide that whatever sounds good, <laughs> whatever sounds good, like, will work. And, like, one of the best examples is, okay, so the the sh- the movie starts off. And it's Riddick, and he's kind of, yeah, he's narrating, he's he's talking about all the people he knows. And then he says that, like, oh, and then, like, a meteor, like, kind of hits, uh, a meteor shower hits the tra- the ship, the, the main lead, Carol. She is, like, at the very beginning, when the ship's about to crash, she's willing to sacrifice the whole group. And we'll talk a little bit more about her character arc. Yeah, she's like trying to like write the ship and she's like, I can't do it. The, like the back end's too heavy. So she's going to like space every passenger to like balance it out essentially. Yeah, and they stop her. But like, so the whole movie is that she thought that the best way to solve the problem was to kill everyone. I'm not going to die for them. And yeah. so she kind of has that guilt throughout the whole movie. But like, again, that's another example of this person who wanted to who like couldn't think outside of their own head. And so like, they're like, Oh, well let's, I'd rather kill everyone than try. So yeah. So the ship crashes, Riddick escapes. And so like the first act of this movie is a, it's good because it's building up this paranoia. And again, it's this guy, John's and he's, he's everything he says about Riddick is like an exaggeration of the truth. So do we just keep him locked up forever? No, that'd be my choice. around humans like if you if you hear john's talk about riddick he's like he will kill you like regardless of who you are but like if you know everything you learn about riddick he's just trying to survive in this like terrible world and it's going over them and you see bones and then suddenly you just see riddick hiding in like the bones you know yeah, there's a lot of him, like, lurking, like, around them. Like, there's actually, like, when they shoot the guy in the back, it cuts to, like, Riddick super far away under an umbrella, like, sipping a drink, just watching. And it's, like, kind of funny, like... He's not even watching. He's just chilling. He's fully aware of what's going on, but he's like, eh. Yeah. Shy. Yeah. Yeah, like, the whole first half of the movie... And it's funny, again, because Johns has set Riddick up as this killer. But Riddick... The whole first half, he's just watching everyone and how they act. So he kind of seems to be like if I know like a lot of times people will describe characters, especially villains as sharks. But Riddick does feel like a shark, especially in this first half of this movie, because he's just kind of floating from place to fate, place, observing everyone. And he never really like he a doesn't really try to hurt anyone, even when he's like attacked. And B, he doesn't really like he he's just trying to like figure things out in a way that like you can tell it interests him as opposed to like oh he's trying to like follow your movements to kill you it's like no i think he's just like interested in how people react which is one of his character traits especially in this one yeah i took it like he's not like he's not hunting people down but he like he he doesn't want to be around people but he also is not like really like he's not going to seek you out to kill you he just wants you to leave him alone like that's kind of like what i assumed like basically yeah and i well because there's a couple of times later in the movie where he'll ask people about their worldview or he'll ask people like or he'll put people like he'll challenge you with like an ideology ideological question and you can kind of just tell that riddick despite hating everyone (laughs) 
<laughs> is uh, he is curious about human nature. He's like my friend Nick Mullen, my best friend. But I don't think um, like I don't think he ca- like it's like I don't think he cares if people live or die. But he's not trying to like he's not malicious, you know. He's just like, he, oh. he's definitely like not going to go out of his way to save you. But if you want to have a good conversation about your ideologies, Riddick is the one. <laughs> or like, Riddick is the one to like, do. Like halfway through, Johns is like, oh, "I'm going to release you, but like remember, I could have killed you right now." And then Riddick's like, "Oh, you should ghost me. It's what I would have done to you." <laughs> and he, and, he, and he's, he's so spiteful of him. That he brings it up later, and you almost get the sense that he only ends up saving everyone out of spite <laughs> to like prove John's wrong, you know, to be like, yeah, no, I can- no, no, he doesn't at all. That's completely against what the theme of this film is. I don't think he like learns to like love people though. At the end, he doesn't learn to love people, but uh, we're about twenty minutes in. Fuck it, let's go into it. So okay, so the theme of the movie for Caroline Fry. Her character arc is that at the beginning, obviously, she tries to purge everyone. And then, so her character her character arc is that, like, yeah, she's kind of this selfish person. And Riddick has this kind of worldview where he thinks that everyone is selfish. And so that's why he's selfish. All you people are so scared of me. Most days I take that as a compliment. But it ain't me you gotta worry about now quickly find out that there's um aliens and they only can survive in the dark they can't sur- like the light literally hurts them so they're like oh we'll just stay in the light but then they quickly find out that there's an eclipse coming and they have no idea how long it lasts for it could last for like a day it could last for a year who knows but they're about to be surrounded in darkness but luckily riddick has eyeballs that can see in the dark which we didn't even talk about yet <laughs> well yeah he wears goggles because he has like this like surgery that lets him see in pitch black but then like being out in sunlight's painful for him. well yeah he can't see that well in the light unless he has the goggles on because he's literally they call him shine jobs where he's like shined off his eyeballs so he can see things in the dark um it's not a real thing guys and it's also covered in the sequel that we'll get to in another in the next they, episode it's it's retconned in this yeah episode. we're not we're, we'll, we'll talk about that problem <laughs> yeah. so like yeah he can see in the dark so they need they not only need him because he's a good fighter but also because he's the only one who can lead them john's who's like oh he doesn't think he can help or he he won't help you he'll kill you if he can it's also like we we didn't really like totally like cover it john's is portrayed as like kind of a hero cop type before this but then you find out the only reason he cares is because Riddick is worth way more money alive. And he's a bounty hunter who's like, who doesn't actually give a shit about anything else. And he's also addicted to painkillers because Riddick shibbed him. But that's kind of understandable. Well, I, I kind of got the impression that he was addicted to painkillers either way. <laughs> well, you don't know, but yeah. yeah, Like, well, and I like that too, because again, like, like Josh was saying, so much of this movie does feel like a character piece. Like, you find out a lot about, like, Riddick. You, like, by this point, you know that Riddick, like, observes people in a way that where he doesn't... He wants to see you not just in general, but he wants to see you at your most vulnerable and see how you react. So like, you kind of get that he's figured out Johns a lot. And he knows, and he kind of reveals to to uh, Fry that Johns is A, a bounty hunter, B, addicted to heroin, and C, uh, full of shit. And so, like, he exposes him and, like, but it it also becomes that thing where it's like, what difference does it make? So, like, so Riddick agrees to do it. There's bigger aliens than the ones that they're fighting. And so, like, Johns immediately starts freaking out. He starts, like, um, trying to figure out who to kill. But one of the things that Riddick does that's a negative thing is that he likes to call people out at the at the worst possible moment for no reason other than to play with everyone's heads. And so, yeah, he reveals that Jack is a girl for no reason, just like because he wants to. And he wants to point out that not only is she a girl, but she has a cut that's leading the aliens to oh, I thought I thought it was literally she was like they meant like she was bleeding like her time of the month. She might, you know, that might be it, but I, I think she was checking her hands and she sees a cut on her hand. Oh, no. Maybe I just can't watch movies that well. And it might be both. 
Um, but I, I thought that she was looking at her hand. It might have also been Fry who was doing that. It's revealed that she's a girl. And then as soon as Jack, or no, as soon as the Johns finds that out, he like wants to kill her um, and like drag her body. It's so funny that Johns, like the character arc of Johns were like, yeah, like Josh was saying at the beginning, he is seen as this hero cop and everyone like, he's pretty much the de facto leader despite the captain. Well, because he's the one being like, no, like we have to save the passengers. But then you realize like, oh, he literally just wants to bring Riddick in alive. Yeah, and he wants, yeah, he's only doing it so that he can have like hostages pretty much. <laughs> but so Jack, like what Jack's, or, I mean, what uh, John's plan is, is to kill Jack and drag her body so that the aliens <laughs> will like pick at it the whole time. And it's like, that's the most horrific thing that I've ever heard. <laughs> And, like, it's just so terrible. And then, like, Riddick uses that opportunity to kill. And because, like, Riddick is like, oh, this is actually a pretty good plan, but I'm going to use your body instead of Jack's body because you're bigger. And also because I hate you. And it goes into, like, a super cool scene where, like, they have a flare and they throw it and they fight in this, like, little arena that's, like, because you have to stay inside the light, which Riddick literally says. And... So they're, like, fighting in this, like, little arena of green light. It just looks super cool. And also Riddick's eyes are, like, reflecting the green, so it looks super cool. The way this movie plays with color, despite, like, being a pretty straightforward movie, is pretty impressive. Yeah, they get, get a lot of mileage out of Riddick's cat eyes for, like, cool scenes, like, half the yeah, dark and well, stuff like that. Every time he looks anywhere like they always make sure to reflect the the light off of his eyes <laughs> yeah. so that he looks like a cat all the time but even then like yeah just like having the sequence in all green or all blue just a pretty cool idea behind everything so uh, yeah anyway so then he kills jack i mean he kills johns which is also cool because like they kill him halfway through raising the tension despite the fact that riddick is also raising the tension <laughs> right but, like, even after that, though, he does come back for them. And I think that's kind of where it's, like, part of him is, like, oh, John said I was, like, a piece of shit who will leave everyone, but I'm not. Yeah, so, well, let me get to this, and then we'll talk about themes. And, guys, Pitch Black is worth watching. It's a great movie. Um, we're going to go into heavy spoilers because we have to to talk about the theme. And so, if you don't want to know any more about the ending, then Pitch Black is cool from... From an independent standpoint, from an acting standpoint, from a story standpoint, it's great. Go check it out. Then come back and hear what I'm about to say. Um, so yeah, so Riddick is like, I'll go get I'll go get the ship and I'll come back for you guys. And they're like, Are you sure you're gonna come back? And he's like, Yeah. <laughs> and so he goes and you immediately realize that Riddick is like, they're like a block away from the ship. And Riddick has just been kind of keeping that from them because they all could have just made it instead of going to the cave. But Riddick hasn't decided that he wants them to live. So Riddick goes to the ship, he turns it on, and then they're like waiting for him. And like eventually they realize that he's probably not coming back. And so Fry goes to like see if she can like figure out what's the holdup or if Riddick's dead or whatever. And then she finds Riddick like in the ship ready to go. And she tells them, and like Riddick is like impressed that she made it there by herself. Please just come with me. I got a better idea. Come with me. You're fucking with me, I know you are. You know I am. You don't know anything about me. That's kind of the ending of Fry's character arc. Because at the beginning, she was willing to purge these people, like literally purge them from the ship so that she could survive. And then the whole movie is her kind of realizing that people aren't selfish or people shouldn't be selfish and we should look out for each other. And so she's literally telling Riddick that she would rather stay and see if she could save these people then go with him and kill them. And that's when Riddick stops doing it to prove John's wrong or to do it out of spite. Yes, that and, is the yeah. term, yes. And that's why I was like kind of fumbling with that because I didn't want to <laughs> reveal it without it. So Riddick is well, like... You died. I would try for this. You did answer. Yes, I would, Riddick. I would. I would die for them.
Because <laughs> again, Riddick loves that. Like he just loves human emotion, which again, like what a great character trait in a in a serial killer. Um, well, yeah. Well, it's, it's like he's like I don't think, and then I don't think it's like oh he's like oh I'm I'm personally interested. Like he's like I'm interested in this decision you're making, but it, it doesn't matter to me if all of us live or die. But I yeah. am very interested that you've made that choice. It's like and yeah. that to me is like his character, you know? Right, right, and so. Then they decide to go back and they're like, there's a scene where Riddick almost falls and Fry tells him, I said, I told you that I would die for them, not for you. So you have to like pick your ass up. And it's like a funny little scene. So then they go pick everyone up and like she gets taken and she dies, obviously. And Riddick is like, oh, don't like not for me. Like you weren't supposed to do it for me. And you can see that Riddick is like visibly shaken by this um, because I think that. Like Fry's arc ends not only it kind of, like Fry decides her quest when she decides that um, she's gonna go back and even if she dies she wants to make sure that everyone else lives. That's her arc, but she completes her part as a character because it proves her point that she was willing to die for these characters, and B it teaches Riddick. You can't be unselfish, but then decide to be selfish for a group of people. You know, you can't be like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm very I'm very uh, I want to give to like the needy, but not like these needy. Only these. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, like it's you can't like pick and choose in terms yeah. of greediness. Like you're either greedy or you're not. And so she kind of like shows it, like, yeah, she's not greedy, and it shows Riddick he's wrong. Like his his ideology of like that humans are inherently kind of primitive and animals is incorrect. And that people like the only way to really be alive is to, to do things for others and to save others. And I think that that's an interesting um, idea that kind of pushes into the sequels that we'll talk about, but it's an, it's also a great arc for Riddick because Riddick is also like, Oh, I'm selfish. And then he kind of learns to stop doing things uh, just for himself and do things for, for others. And I think that that's, I mean, just A plus storytelling, you know? Yeah, no, it's like, it's, and it's also, it's like a nice way to like wrap up the movie too. Cause there's just the next thing is like the, the very few survivors, like finally like getting to the ship, you know? Yeah. Well, and like, it's so funny. Cause every time I watch this movie, I'm like, why does she have to die? Cause you like Fry. She's a cool character. And that girl, uh, Robna Mitchell, I'm, uh, there's no way I'm saying that right, but whatever. <laughs> she's also like in Silent Hill. She's a great actress. Um, Pitch Black. I would also like to uh, give props to our third Mike, Benny, who you can definitely hear for at least the last 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, his, his snoring is that. getting fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so Also, sure Benny, like, him. he legit does the whistle when he's... He does the whistling when he snores, like a cartoon. But he'll snore and he'll be like... Like the... Yeah, it's so funny to hear because, like, he you has, don't believe like, it. the giant snot bubble on his nose that comes out like a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> and when he's, like, asleep, there's, like, little Bennies dancing around him. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, Pitch Perfect. It's a great movie. It's like... Uh, Josh, would you say it's underappreciated or... I know the sequels are. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> we'll get to that. I haven't actually seen the third one, so I'm excited to see that. But um, I would say it's kind of like a forgotten thing. It's almost like this movie reminds you of like the ideal, like Vin Diesel, like sci-fi film, which is like, there's a lot where it's like, they're basically just lesser tries at being pitch black, you know? Yeah. I mean, but you could say that of a lot of, except for like that, Aliens. That is true, but, it, too. but it's also... Uh, yeah, kind of somewhat forgotten. So. Well, and I like the idea that they're going for. We'll talk about it next time. But I do like, A, that this movie was a hit. It's so funny because I remember reading this about this movie like in Entertainment Weekly. And then I remember, I didn't even remember the name. And so like my dad took us to go see this movie in dollars. And I was like, what the fuck? I don't want to see a movie called Pitch Black. <laughs> and once we started watching, I was like, oh, I remember this movie. You've seen this movie on Entertainment Weekly. That's cool. But I... You know, I've been chasing that feeling like of not knowing, like just going to see a random movie and hoping it's good. It's very hard to do now with the internet because like everything, like if you want to see a trailer, 
you'll see it. And if you don't want to see it, Twitter will show it to you regardless. <laughs> Pitch Black. Josh, any last thoughts? Um, no. no. no okay. I got so what we're going to do, guys, is that this will... I don't know when this is going to air, but... We're gonna do three. We're gonna do one pitch black movie a month. So next month we'll do Chronicles of Riddick, and then the month after we'll do Riddick. This way, it's like if you don't like Riddick, you don't have to like be bogged down. And then and, uh, we're gonna do a Twitch channel and do uh, Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay, the video game. Yeah, and then we're gonna do the cartoon. We should watch the cartoon. I like it. I've never seen. Um, it. But yeah, so Riddick, pitch black, a great movie. Vin Diesel, great actor. And so, good movie overall. But I hope you enjoyed this. We kind of went hardcore into theme. And I think that's because I didn't realize how big of a theme Pitch Black had before. Because I think I just was watching it because I loved it. Yeah, I haven't seen it in probably like 15 years. So, it's kind of one of those like, oh, yeah. This is like actually pretty like tight in terms of like what it's trying to do, you know? Yeah, it is funny. Like sometimes you watch a movie so much that or like you like a movie so much that you kind of forget that it has themes or character. Like, I think the same thing happened to me with um, fucking that other movie. Oh, the Frighteners, <laughs> because I see it so often that I don't like, I forget that it's actually a real movie and not just like a thing I love. It's, it's kind of one of those, like, it's like the, like the RoboCop ideal where it's like, if you're a dumb guy watching it, you're like, Oh, I like it. Cause it's like, he shoots a lot of people. If you're smart watching it. You're like, Oh, it's still like good. It's like good on multiple levels, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think that that's a good that's a good way to put it. So that's how we'll end it, guys. Go watch my movies on Tubi, or go watch Pitch Black. It's usually streaming somewhere. Um, it's it's actually we'll not s- right now, but you know, damn. Soon, soon it probably will be. It'll, it'll be back, it'll but be, it's uh, like two dollars on Prime or something. I'm sure, you know. Yeah, it's worth a rent. It's worth a buy, in my opinion. But either way, we'll see you guys next time. I don't know what we're doing next week. Probably something horrific. 